This episode is sponsored by Wren. Throughout history, the world has been rocked by the dangerous volcanoes that spew forth lava, ash and fire. It's one of the many natural disasters that can happen on our planet of which we have no control over. Like hurricanes and earthquakes, we can try to protect ourselves from volcanoes, but there's nothing we can do to stop them. And if you thought a regular volcano was horrible, just wait until you get a load of a super volcano. A super volcano has the ability to outdo a regular one in nearly every way possible and could drastically alter our way of life. After the eruption, Earth would go dark for days, leading to mass panic across the globe. Sounds pretty scary, doesn't it? But the most frightening thing about a supervolcano is that one exists right now and is waiting below America, ready to go off at any moment. If Yellowstone's supervolcano does in fact wake up and go wild in the next year, what would happen? How would it affect us and Earth's climate? And would we even have a chance of making it out alive? The term supervolcano was first used back in 1949, and it refers to the type of volcano that reaches a volcanic explosivity index of 8, which is the largest type of explosion in existence. According to the United States Geological Survey, a volcano is considered super if it has had at least one explosion that released more than 240 cubic miles of material, which is more than twice the volume of Lake Erie. In the last 132 million years, only 40 eruptions have reached VEI-8. On average, an explosion of this magnitude only occurs once every 50,000 years. The last eruption of this magnitude happened about 27,000 years ago in New Zealand. But don't get too comfortable, because scientists have recently come across evidence that America's supervolcano located in Yellowstone is getting ready to rumble. The Yellowstone supervolcano resides deep in Yellowstone National Park in Wyoming. It is about 43 by 28 miles wide, or 70 by 28 kilometers, and formed about 2.1 million years ago. Supervolcanoes are able to occur in many different situations. For example, Yellowstone's volcano is due to hotspots and rising plumes of magma that come from deep inside Earth. These hotspots create a multitude of volcanoes due to the constant shifting of tectonic plates. Regardless of how the magma forms, a volcano needs a ton of it to produce a super eruption. Once the magma is able to build up, pressure in the underground cavity increases. An eruption of this size requires tons of pressure to actually launch the huge pockets of molten lava through the surface. It is thought that the Yellowstone volcano has only blown its top three times. 2.1 million years ago, 1.3 million years ago, and 664,000 years ago. But each time it has made it worth the wait. During the last eruption, it is thought that the volcano spewed up to 1,000 cubic kilometers of rock, dust, and ash into the atmosphere, which was enough to blot out the sun for much of the country. If the volcano decided to go off again in 2022, the impact would be ruinous. It would likely start with a swarm of small earthquakes hinting at something big on the horizon. If the volcano was set up to experience a super eruption, something only possible with these super volcanoes, the shaking would be drastic and impossible to ignore. This would be followed by the ejection of lava that would likely flow for about 40 miles or so. That doesn't seem too bad, right? But the problem with an eruption would be the volcanic ash, which is a noxious, dark combination of glass and rock. This filthy concoction would fly miles high straight up and would bring transportation and life as we know it to a grinding halt. Planes can't fly in these sorts of conditions and people can't go outside and enjoy fresh air when the sky is literally raining volcanic ash. A super eruption from Yellowstone would cover much of the country in more than three feet of pure deadly ash. Colorado, Utah, Montana, Idaho, and of course Wyoming would be coated, while both coasts of the United States would also receive their fair share of it too. 
Animals, plants and even humans would be killed by the extremely harsh air conditions. It's also incredibly destructive to buildings too and would cause serious damage to the infrastructure of most of the United States. Roads, highways and even the power grid would be irreversibly harmed and would lead to practically all of North America shutting down. But the scars created by this incredibly rare volcano would impact more than just people. It would also severely impact the planet's climate. Volcanoes emit sulfur aerosols that have the ability to reflect sunlight back into the atmosphere and cool our planet. Back in April of 1815, the Mount Tambora volcano in present-day Indonesia changed the world after years of warning signs. It was a VEI-7, which is less than what we would experience with the volcano in Yellowstone. Even though Mount Tambora didn't reach the heights of a supervolcano, it certainly crippled our planet. Due to its sulfur aerosols, the Tambora eruption cooled the planet and damaged crops around the globe for years to come. The explosion of 1815 had an eruption column that reached the stratosphere at more than 141,000 feet. The ash particles remained in the atmosphere for years and some very bizarre yet brilliant sunsets were noted for months to come. Plant life was greatly harmed all over the globe and it even caused famine in parts of the world. Meanwhile, in Indonesia, vegetation was all but completely wiped out. After the Mount Tambora explosion in 1816, the world experienced what was called the year without a summer because global temperatures decreased and significant agricultural problems plagued the planet. In June of that year, snow was falling in New York, thousands of miles away from the blast's epicenter. This lasted for months and ruined most agricultural crops in North America. In 1991, another volcano named Mount Pinatubo erupted in the Philippines and was nearly 1,000 times smaller than the Yellowstone's biggest recorded eruption, yet it resulted in a temporary but substantial change in world temperatures. The volcano's sulfur dioxide emissions interacted with the atmosphere and cooled the planet's surface for about three years after the eruption. Global temperatures even decreased by 1.3 degrees Fahrenheit during the height of the storm. Because of this, we know that once Yellowstone's supervolcano is set off, it will have a devastating result on global temperatures, much worse than Mount Pinatubu's. But until then, we just have to keep waiting and hope for the best. The effects of a super eruption may be out of your hands, but if you're interested in doing your part to protect our planet from climate change, then you might like this episode's sponsor, REN, a website that makes it easy to calculate your carbon footprint and then offset it by funding projects that plant trees and protect rainforests. Once you sign up and contribute to offset your carbon footprint, you will receive monthly updates from the projects you support. My personal favorite project is the tech-enabled Amazon Rainforest Protection, which uses satellite monitoring and drones to quickly detect, report, and stop illegal deforestation. If you want to help me with this project or see their other projects, make sure to visit Wren at the link below. We have even partnered with Wren to plant an extra 10 trees in your name for the first 100 people who sign up at the first link in the description. Thanks again to Ren for sponsoring this video, and I'll see you next time.